ربش رالی صدری و اسلی عمری واہل الفت ہم لسانی افقا قولی اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم لیٹ اسٹارٹ دا بریف ایکسپلینیشن اف دا 21 پارا ود دا دعا دیٹ اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی میک اٹ ایزی فار اس ٹو انڈرسٹینڈ اٹ اینڈ امپلیمنٹ اٹ ان اور لائفز آمین سورہ الانکبوت کنٹینیوز ان دا 21 پارا دا فرسٹ ورس اف دس پارا گیوز اس سم امپورٹنٹ انسٹرکشنز Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Recite, O Prophet, what is revealed to you of the book and establish prayer. Surely prayer restrains one from shameful and evil act. Indeed, remembrance of Allah is the greatest of all things. Allah knows what you do. Remember that this surah started with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us that we will be tested. Now here in verse 45, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us some tips on how to pass these tests. What are these tips? Recite the Quran and establish prayer. Quran is our manual given to us from our Creator. It has everything. everything we need to function at optimum level and it has solutions to all our problems what does prayer do prayer is the energy by which we recharge our souls and our iman our daily hassles and problems drain our batteries and when we disconnect from everything and connect with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are re-energized right then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that establishing prayer stops us from shameful and evil act but why doesn't our prayer stop us from doing wrong because we are just praying and not establishing prayers it means my prayer has not yet been established as it's still under construction now how well and how strong my construction is depends upon me another command comes from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in verse 46 it says and do not debate with the people of the book unless it is in the best manner all discussions about religion should be done in a rational civilized and decent manner our purpose should not be to make the other person lose but to win heart then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse 50 6 my believing servants my earth is vast so worship me and me alone this verse is is a hint towards the first hijra which had not yet happened when this surah was revealed here allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the muslims of makkah and all believers that if you feel it is becoming difficult for you to follow islam in your city or country you may leave it and move to another place where you can live as true believers this surah concludes with verse 69 where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises his pleasure and guide guidance to those who strive in his way surah ar rom let's take a look at the flow chart of the microstructure of surah ar rom which was revealed in the 5th year of prophethood in makkah the surah begins with the prediction of the victory of the romans over the over the superpowers of that time persians this was done 9 years before the event happened and the roman empire was near its downfall a few years later the romans defeated the persians and took back their land that same year the muslims were victorious at badr so both the predictions from the quran came true allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse 5 he gives victory whoever he wills for he is the almighty most merciful starting from verse 8 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a list of signs within ourselves and spread in the universe which prove that there will be a life after death in verse 21 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says an of his signs is that he has created mates for you from your own kind that you may find peace in them and he has said between you love and mercy surely there are signs in this for those who reflect this verse teaches us why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created mates and how they can have a successful marriage we all have our ideals of what a successful marriage should be like right allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us successful marriage is one where there is peace where both spouses give and receive love and mercy from each other so our spouses are basically a gift from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse 30 o prophet and his followers turn your face single mindedly to the true faith and adhere to the true nature of what allah has created human beings the mold fashioned by allah cannot be altered that is the true straight faith although most people do not know as humans have been pre-programmed by allah taala with an operating system that has loaded basic human values views and morals in all of us it is our fitra or true nature that we believe and worship our creator allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us not to fight our true nature and firmly follow the straight path that is islam then we are ordered in verse 38 so give your close relatives their due as well as the poor and the needy traveler that is best for those who seek the pleasure of allah and it is they who will be successful allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to know that if you want to please him then please his people by giving them 
their right surya lukman let's take a look at the flow chart of the microstructure of surya lukman which was revealed in the 5th year of prophethood in makka surya lukman focuses on the story of lukman the wise and his advice to his son lukman's word of wisdom were famous among the arabs in this sura allah subhanahu wa taala reminds the arabs that lukman's message was the same as the message of islam allah subhanahu wa taala says in verse 12 indeed we bless lukman with wisdom saying be grateful to allah for whatever for whoever is grateful it is only for their own good and whoever is ungrateful then surely allah is self sufficient praiseworthy we are told that lukman was wise because he had been given wisdom from allah subhanahu wa taala and the first demand of wisdom is gratefulness and obedience before his lord point to note is that allah subhanahu wa taala is not in need of our gratitude our gratitude is beneficial for our own selves the quran then mentions the advice which lukman gave to his son allah subhanahu wa taala liked his advice so much that he has preserved it in the quran the first advice is oh my dear son never associate anything with allah in worship for associating others with him is truly the worst of all wrongs the first lesson for us in this verse is how he addresses his son oh my beloved our son how do we talk to our children do we speak with them with love and respect or do we only mistreat them and talk to them harshly because we are superior than them the first advice that he gives his son is not to do shirk every believer even from a young age should be taught that allah subhanahu wa taala alone is our master possessor of all power the second advice comes in verse 14 and we have commanded people to honor their parents their mothers bore them through hardship upon hardship and their weaning takes 2 years so be grateful to me and your parents to me is the final return after the right of allah subhanahu wa taala comes the rights of parents and among parents the mother comes first most of us don't remember the hardships our mother bore for us when we were small right and our fathers they worked hard day and night to provide for us they counsel us and advise us and for this they deserve our respect and honor then lukman says in verse 16 oh my dear son even if a deed were the weight of a mustard seed be it hidden in a rock or in the heavens or the earth allah will bring it forth surely allah is most subtle all aware lukman teaches his son that nothing is hidden from allah subhanahu wa taala you cannot do anything good or bad anywhere or any time which may remain hidden from allah he is not only aware of it but when the time for accountability comes he will place before you a full record of each act of yours so stay away from sins in the next verse lukman gives his son four instructions establish prayer enjoin what is right forbid what is wrong and be patient over what happens to you in verse 19 he teaches son how to walk and talk he says and be moderate in your pace and lower your voice indeed the most disagreeable of sounds is the voice of donkeys it's not enough to be just good from the inside the outside is also important our body language facial expressions tone of voice all make or break our personality when we study the life of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam we see how cultured and humble he was his walk and talk were both calm and dignified people loved spending time in his company and to become like him should be our goal too this was the timeless and sincere advice from a loving father to his son i hope we to advise our children in this manner and become the first ones to instill these habits in ourselves surah as-sajda let's take a look at the flow chart of the microstructure of surah as-sajda which was revealed in the fourth or fifth year of prophethood in makkah the central subject of this surah is the believe in life after death allah subhanahu wa taala starts the surah with an introduction to himself the revelation of this book is beyond doubt from the lord of all worlds many surahs start in a similar manner why because allah subhanahu wa taala wants us to pay attention from the very start that this message is being issued by the ruler of the universe and not some ordinary human if you choose to accept this message then know that you will have to obey its commands then from verse 4 to 9 the many signs of the majesty and power of the ruler of the universe are shown to us in verse 12 allah subhanahu wa taala describes the conditions of sinners on the day of judgment if only you could see the wicked hanging their heads in shame before their lord crying our lord we have now seen and heard so send us back and we will do good we truly have sure faith now that day the declaration of faith will be of no use they will have already failed the test which was to believe while the reality was hidden then allah subhanahu wa taala informs us about the attitude of the believers we are told in verse 15 the 
only true believers in our revelation are those who when it is recited to them fall into prostration and glorify the praises of their lord and are not too proud these are the qualities of the believers they listen and they surrender they do not regard it beneath their dignity to submit their will in front of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what else do they do they abandon their beds invoking their lord with hope and fear and donate from what we have provided for them their nights are spent in gaining the pleasure of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they are regular in their tahajjud prayers and they spend from whatever little or much that they have do we also have these qualities do we submit our will to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do we always praise him do we leave our sleep for his sake do we spend to earn his pleasure think about it allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse 18 is the one who is a believer equal before allah to the one who is rebellious they are not equal these are two different attitudes and the results will also be totally different one will gain the pleasure of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and will be rewarded accordingly and the other they will be the ones who will be punished for their crimes this brings us to the end of our lesson for today and to the question I'm going to ask myself. The question is which advice from Surah Al-Lakman do I really need to use so I can be a better person? Inshallah we will meet again tomorrow with the next para. Allah Hafiz.